Hi everyone, my name is Dagmara Aldrich. I am Chief People and Culture Officer at Zumo. We are a Scottish-based cryptocurrency um, a wallet and crypto as a service platform. And I'm also a um, startup coach um, for leaders and execs. So many opportunities that technology can offer. So probably the uh, most obvious one is around security and storage of uh, mental health records. Um, obviously, blockchain technology offers a lot of um, privacy, and the you know the encryption methods are much more superior. And the decentralized nature um, of um, keeping those records separate it decreases the risk of um, potential breach. The immutability of blockchain and the global nature of it uh, can democratise access to mental health support and information that most importantly um, blockchain can truly verify where this is the right type of advice and whether you know there's so much misinformation where it comes um, to internet and I think that can definitely be catered for uh, with the usage of um, a blockchain technology. Um, creation of um, peer support networks and peer support groups where people can support each other in their mental health recovery journey anonymously and through you know verifiable um, ways and I guess it decreases the burden on the mental health system at the moment because access to uh, mental health professionals, as we know, it's um, extremely difficult. So like with any technology, I think we need to be balanced in how we uh, utilise it because there are potential risks and of course there are great opportunities. So if I think of the opportunities or how um, the blockchain technology can support us, in managing our mental health. Democratising access to um, mental health support in terms of having, for example, um, chatbots and machine learning solutions to provide um, therapy, for example. Obviously, particularly that first level of therapeutic support, again, in during times where we've got um, a crisis in terms of gaining access, you know, waiting list of two, three years to get uh, mental health support or to get diagnosed, for example, for neurodiversity. Um, so I think that's something that absolutely could um, hugely benefit. Uh, we're living in a world where uh, we're constantly searching for focus, but actually we should be focusing on removing the distractions. So of course there is, you know, there is the how can those technologies contribute to distractions, as I call it, and that sort of um, tech overwhelm. Um, also, there is a risk of um, over-reliance, so you know, with um, greater access um, to uh, those things, there is a risk that we um, become over-reliant on technology and we are actually then reducing the human-to-human -human contact even further. And whilst, you know, I am a great um, supporter of AI and the capabilities, nothing can really replace that person-to-person um, -person kind of um, uh, interaction. Because the limitation of AI that we often don't talk about is the way our emotions are stored and created and processed is actually in our bodies and AIs don't have bodies. Therefore, they cannot provide emotional support, which is something that only peer-to-peer -peer interaction can provide. So I think there is, of course, risk that unless you have a balance, you know, and you sort of use um, the this and that approach, or both and approach, as opposed to this instead of that, there is a risk that um, you become even more isolated, and that will definitely have a um, adverse impact on your mental health. And finally, the, the one thing that I can think of as well is privacy anxiety, actually. Because it's such a new technology and we still, as an industry, we're still fairly young and we're still building trust uh, and it's, you know, complex. So people are like, well, I don't know how this works, so how can I trust it? So like with, um, you know, as I said, with any technology, um, I think the responsibility has to lie both on the providers um, of the technology and of course on the users of the technology. So I think there is 
um, I guess there is moral obligation for providers that build um, those you know, solutions to support your uh, mental health, to build it in such a way that it, for example, doesn't become um, addictive or doesn't increase your anxiety. And of course, as users, um, you know, there is something for us to really, truly balance the use of technology with time where we you know, switch off when we you know, uh, reduce um, or, well, where we actually step away from the screen.